Hey, it's me, CJ. I'm gonna shut the door. Should have done that first. And it's me, CJ. Should I undo my hair? Probably should. It's not gonna look optimally cute. I got a massage for my birthday. My birthday was March 4th. And my hair is like still greasy from the oils that she put in it. Um, even though I've washed it like three times since then. So that's something you didn't need to know, but I'm telling you anyway. But I do have a little beanie right here. A little bean bean. A little beanie guy. Okay, wow. So, hi everyone. Welcome back to CJ Reads. This is your host, CJ. <laughs> I feel kind of crazy. Hope you can pick up on that vibe. Um, I thought I would be having like a cute little announcement video to go up today like as a part of my friday reads that would like be an announcement that me and kiki are moving and showing you off a new house uh, but that didn't happen to give you a live catch up me and kiki are moving to arizona we're moving back to my hometown in arizona my tiny conservative farmer town um for a lot of reasons we have lived in portland like 10 11 years now Kiki's lived here even a couple years longer, so he's going on like 13, and we're sick of uh, being cold. <laughs> um, it is really draining, like really intensely draining to live in this kind of climate. And I just feel like we want to change, we want a fresh start, um, and the housing market here is bananas, like completely bananas. I live in a 900 square foot house. Um, my dad lives with me for the majority of the year and it's not a sustainable size for us to cohabit in a sustainable way. And also for me to work from home. We only have one bathroom. Again, the house is really tiny. Um, and for us to be able to, mom's calling me. For us to be able to, <laughs> I'm gonna answer it. My mom's actually calling me about house stuff. Um, anyway, we're moving from Portland because of the weather and because it's not sustainable for us to live in a tiny house with my dad and the financial investment for us to be able to buy a bigger house is like leaps and bounds over what I wanna be paying for a mortgage. I don't wanna spend all my money on a mortgage. It's just like, I don't know, not a financial priority of mine. And I don't know, I don't know if anyone else feels this, but like the pandemic really right-sized a lot of things for me. And what's important to me now is making sure my dad is set up and comfortable, um, being closer to my family. I think my mom and dad are both getting older <laughs> and having more of an ingrained support system through my family living in Arizona is like a huge plus. Kiki's sister is moving to Arizona. His grandma just moved there as well as his aunt. Um, yeah, and I think it's just like a new set of possibilities for us, right? Like I'm gonna be taking Sunnies down there. Who knows? Yuma doesn't have an independent bookstore. Maybe one day I could open one. Um, I think it's just like a new, new set of dreams. <laughs> Um, so we're doing that. I mean, it feels kind of crazy. If anyone else moved back to their hometown during the pandemic, let me know. I have some kind of like weird, not weird, I guess like inherited narrative in my brain of me like not being a failure, I would say, but like maybe that it's a step back or like not an obvious step that I would take in my life. Um, it's just weird to be from a place of adolescence where all you can wait to do is like get out of the town you're from, which is very much so was my vibe in Yuma. Um, and now to like actively have it as a choice that makes more sense for my family. It's just a weird spot to be in. It's kind of a mind trip, but it's what we're doing. I don't know if we're gonna stay there forever, but we are gonna stay there uh, for a while. <laughs> 
So we are moving. We're moving to Arizona. We are listing our Portland house for sale. Um, the housing market here is insane. So we're going to get a nice, nice profit off of it, which is great. We've put so much time and energy into rehabbing this house and making it um, a beautiful space to live in. I think it will be cool to get some return on that. And obviously we'll fund the house purchase in Arizona, which will be sick. And that's my housing update. We actually flew down to Yuma on Friday, March 4th, because an, our offer got accepted on a house that we were really optimistic about. We loved the house. Um, we were just going in to be there for the inspection and make sure we liked it in real life. And we did not like it in real life. <laughs> so that was a new experience for me, us trying to emotionally grapple with that loss, you know, like we were already envisioning ourselves there, envisioning renovation plans. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we were. And then once we got there, we kind of like realized it wasn't the space for us and wasn't going to be workable. It hurts. it hurts. It does hurt. We got off so easy on our Portland house. We saw this house. We liked it. We put an offer in and it was accepted like five years ago. So now we're just like in the, the wormhole of real estate, right? So that house fell through. Another house we liked um, ended up falling through because the financing was weird and was only accepting cash offers. And now we just put an offer in on another house that we never saw in person. My mom went there this morning to check it out for us. Um, but that's also weird. We haven't seen it in real life. Are we gonna have to fly down there again? Are we gonna get it? Are we gonna be crushed? Who knows? So that's my big announcement. I'm moving probably in June to Yuma, Arizona, the thriving metropolis. <laughs> um, yeah, let me know if you've done a similar life change like this before. It's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. It's kind of scrambling my brain a little bit, but I know it's the right choice at the same time, which is a weird place to be. Oh, my camera died, um, but I'm back. So we're moving. That was house stuff, feels weird. There's a lot going on, prepping our house to sell it. All of that to say, if I'm less online lately, that's why. Um, I'm still watching tubes. Still winding down with some tubes every night, but not not gonna be uploading a lot of tubes, I don't think. Uh, bookish news now. Shall we get to the meat and the potatoes? Um, my friend Sujay sent me a birthday gift which is so kind. He's my bookstagram and YouTube friend. He archived his channel right now or I would link it, but um, it is a manual for cleaning women by Lucia Berlin. It's eight short stories. Some take place in the Southwest, which I'm really looking forward to reading. This has been on my TBR for like years and I've never picked it up for some reason. So thank you again, Sujit. You're literally so kind and sweet and it's appreciated. Um, he has my address, that's, I don't know, that's not relevant to you, um, but that's why he sent me something. I don't have like a wish list or something. <laughs> um, my big like bookish update is that I finally finished Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen, which is like 500, 600 pages long. I had started that at the beginning of the year and put it off while I was reading some other videos for that Lauren Euler vlog. But I went back to it and I finished it and I really liked it. I think people who have criticism about Jonathan Franzen is valid, but I like honestly don't think you can knock his work. Like if you want to read a character rich, weaving, sprawling narrative, he's your guy. Both Crossroads and The Correction we're so like insular and focused on the familial and like these micro interactions between each family member. And they're so realized and well done. Crossroads in particular follows a family, a pastor's family who lives in a small Midwestern town. Um, it kind of is at the crux of counterculture in the 1960s and 70s and follows each family member as they interact with the church and interact with one another and interact with their small community. 
as far as like character archetypes, we kind of have like a mom who is losing her shit and has some hidden backstory that she hasn't told anyone. A son who is dabbling with drugs and turns out to be mentally ill. Um, an academic son who is more liberal leaning, who gets involved with the Vietnam War. A perfect supposed angel child who's like very sociable and popular. Um, a young boy and then the dad himself is the pastor of this church and I think it's commentary on like belief and like the kernel of religion as this thing that kind of ties communities and families together and is like so rich and fertile for things to happen out of them not good things not bad things but it's just like such a source of interaction um for so many people and such a cross-section of people's lives it was really fun to read about um yeah i loved the kind of interplay of the dad pastor who was once thought he was cool and he's not cool anymore and his like battle with the new youth pastor that comes into town I thought the writing about um, his time doing like service mission trips for indigenous families in Arizona actually was funny. Um, <laughs> there's they're they're kind of uh, in the latter half of the book held up and critiqued by some of the indigenous youth that um, isn't happy with their presence there and doesn't think any of the work they're doing is beneficial and then we also kind of have this like memory and recount of the dad's first experience meeting these people when he was volunteering when he was a young boy and how he formed relationships with them and got integrated into part of their community to begin with which was like pretty beautiful the descriptions of the landscape and him just being able to witness and become a part of that social structure even for a brief moment was just kind of entrancing to read about so um i think it's one of three it's going to be an ongoing trilogy and i think it's going to center around the same family so i'm excited to see where it goes next i think uh judson the youngest son will play a big part in the next book because he was so young in this one and my big question and takeaway is what is going to be that kernel that keeps everyone together like religion and church did for for crossroads um i don't know maybe it's like music some of the families have um some ties to entertainment uh maybe it's i don't know the rise of capitalism maybe like is that what Francis doing is showing our devotion to things that are worthy of worthy of devotion and in, in religion to to how the american landscape and focused shifted to consumption i don't know i think it's i think friends is great and if you haven't read one of his novels yet i would highly recommend crossroads or the corrections i enjoyed both of them immensely uh after crossroads i picked up Vladimir by Julia Mae Jonas. It is a new release from a first time author and it is following a middle aged couple who are both professors in an academic setting after the wake of a scandal. Um, basically her husband is asked to resign because it is called out that he has had numerous consensual sexual relationships with his students throughout his teaching career which his wife was aware of they had an open marriage it was not a betrayal to her by any means and it's kind of unpacking how she's viewed after that what their relationship looks like now that other people have that private info available to them and she's also dealing with that and then deeply obsessed with this new professor named vladimir who is new to the college that she teaches at. A lot of my friends have read and liked this book. I'm liking it. It's super readable, um, kind of balmy on the brain. Nothing too arduous or exhausting, which is 
the vibe right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of the only book I'm reading. I asked for the new David Sedaris collection on NetGalley and Little Brown is leaving me on red, which is really depressing. If anyone works at Little Brown, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I need the galley to the new state David Sears to survive. It's all I'm looking forward to. I've gotten a lot of good book mail lately, um, but I can't remember what I've showed you already, <laughs> which is not helpful to you or to me, is it? Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I hope you're doing well. Any other bookish things I can think of? I think that's it, honestly. Um, definitely feeling more comfort reads, more easy slice of life stuff at the moment. Brainy no worky. That's it. Just wanted to check in. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, love you. Bye. <laughs>